Now let's see the physiology of pupillary block and how it causes a rise in the intraocular pressure. Now what happens the main thing is that the pupil is dilated in this condition. When is the pupil dilated? We all know that the pupil dilates when there is a reduction in the brightness of light. So now there is a tense person sitting in the dark that is an anxious person or as we have discussed an emotionally unstable person let's uh, assume and when he's sitting when she's sitting in the dark the pupil is mid dilated so there is an increase in the physiological pupil block so let's imagine to understand this clearly this is a piece of cloth and two people are holding it tightly from either side so you can know that when it is held tight it is very taut but when they let it loose, it becomes like this. It becomes flaccid. Right? So, the same thing you can apply over here is that when the pupil is constricted, it is like this. It is taut and very tight and extended. But when it is dilated, it becomes flaccid like this. So, the peripheral iris is more flaccid. As you can see in this picture, when it becomes flaccid, the aqueous, it, the, this, this part falls on the lens and comes in contact with this. So, when this aqueous is secreted, it gets collected all over in the posterior chamber. So, the intraocular pressure increases in the posterior chamber and this condition is called iris bombe when the iris moves forward because of collection of aqueous humor in the posterior chamber. So, this, uh, let's just revise. There is a position of iris to the lens preventing the aqueous from flowing from posterior to the anterior chamber causing iris bombe. Now, this iris goes and blocks the angle. So, the pressure in the posterior chamber rises resulting in anterior bowing of the peripheral iris causing an obstruction of our trabecular meshwork that is here. It is obstructed by the anteriorly bowed iris.